Aloha and welcome to Holistic Wellness Revealed. I'm Letitia Sharp and I'm your host today as we talk about trust, truth, and the process. Our uh, guest today that I'm honored and so delighted to bring on is Mu Hawaiian cultural practitioner, Keone Hanalei. Hi, Keone. Welcome. Aloha, Tish. I'm so happy to be here. So happy to share. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm just, I'm beyond elated that you're here and I can't wait to have you share with our viewers. Um, first of all, I'd like to talk about what Mu is because a lot of people may not be familiar with that term. I'm sure they know Hawaiian, but the Mu kind of throws people off and the people who do know, I'm sure they want to know more. So can you expand on that, please? Yes, I would love to. I would just preface that with uh, something that is super unique about uh, my lineage is that I have access to my lineage that spans 1,017 generations or, or 20,000 years. And when we go that far back, we really penetrate what is considered contemporary Hawaiian, which is like the last 2,000 years of Hawaiian history is really the, the history of Hawaii and the Hawaiian people that is established in the culture today. That to which uh, precedes that and goes beyond that is quite mysterious. We don't have a lot of access or uh, access to the doctrines of that, but my family, we do. And there's other uh, Hawaiian families who also have access to it. Um, some of us, we have what is known as an oli helu in, in our culture. Oli helu, it's a genealogical chant. And most Hawaiian families uh, do have an oli helu, whether they remember it or not. But the oli helu will um, uh, tell about different names, place names, and characteristics of different generations of that lineage. And this is how and why I know 1,017 generations. So when we penetrate beyond that 2,000 a year mark, um, back to like 1 AD, right? When we penetrate into that, that is what we would consider mu. That is prehistoric, pre-Polynesian or pre-Tahitian Hawaiian culture, mu. And a lot of people um, may be more familiar with how it's uh, pronounced as Lemuria. Mm, right. A lot of talk about Lemuria. And so it's a mu, it's not mu. It's well, it, it, it differs. If you live on Kauai and you have a, an accent in Kauai, they would pronounce it mu because if you look at the spelling, the U has a kahako above the U, which is an accent bar. So which would suggest it would be properly pronounced mu. But if you are a Maui or Molokai, uh, it's commonly pronounced mu. Um, I just love to, to remain loyal to its spelling. And because it's spelled with the kahako or the accent bar above the U, it would be pronounced mu. Okay, great. Well, that's good to know. Now I've got that cleared up. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I would like to move into some of your training because you said that you have this um, family chant and that's what has gifted you so much of your knowledge is there more than just chanting like how did you grow up what was it like growing up with um your your kahuna your tutu your auntie I'm not sure exactly if you could just yeah give us a rundown because that seems and feels so sacred to me and I, I feel like that's something that we all kind of want. We're, we're wanting that ancestry training, you know, and you got it. So you mm -hmm. tell. Oh, I love how you just said that ancestry training. <laughs> um, yes, I suppose, you know, my grandmother, Kawiki Onalani, was a well-known makaula or makaula here on Maui. And makaula, makaula is a, is a mystic. And so she uh, really kept... Uh, the, our doctrines relevant and, and contemporized our doctrines. And she is the one who hanaid me, formally hanaid me when I was born and, and raised me in that ceremony of, of learning and remembering and being a carrier of our doctrines. You know, hanai, the tradition of hanai in the Hawaiian culture, it, it's not uncommon, but it's been misunderstood uh, today. You know, 
A proper hanai, there's two different reasons why someone would be hanaid. One is because they would uh, form an alliance or an allegiance with another family altogether. And so the child would be gifted to another ohana so that that family, those two families could now have an allegiance and an alliance. The other reason why someone would be hanaid was because they were uh, selected to download <laughs> the family's doctrines. Mm -hmm. And so that's why my grandmother, Kawiki Onalani, uh, decided to hanai me. And the first five years of my life, she was just sharing and and in, in ceremony with me, my family's mo'olelo, my family's history. Mm, I love that. So is she was she considered a kahuna? She was considered a makaula or a makaula. Okay. And that's, a, that's a, a Hawaiian mystic. And to, you know, because I get this question a lot, right? Like, oh, what's the difference between a makaula and a kahuna? So uh, a mystic, a uh, makaula, is one who remains really grounded and who's very practical. Um, a kahuna oftentimes is someone who's more unrelatable. Um, but a makaula is one who can uh, integrate themselves in all communities. And in, in ancient Hawaii, of course, we have the, the maka'ainana, the, the common people. A makaula can integrate in the maka'ainana, the common people, and share that wisdom uh, in that way. So there's not really a sense of hierarchy when it comes to the makaula. When you work with kahunas, there is a sense of hierarchy. They're more uh, considered untouchable. Okay, wow, that totally cleared that up for me. Thank you so, so much. So in this training, let's get to our subject for today. In this training that you received very intensely and completely, like you were in it all the time, every day, till you were five, how were you taught to locate trust within yourself? Mm. Well, you know, I know that this may sound really, really trite, but one of the first lessons that my kupuna, because it wasn't just my my grandmother, my tutu, it was also uh, the female elders who assisted in raising me. Uh, the very first thing is to be indoctrinated in one's own presence, mm -hmm. to be completely present. And in that presence, the retrieval of one's ea or one's sovereignty because each and every one of us are here to offer and to contribute a very specific kind of contribution, a very specific kind of service by way of that ea, of that sovereignty. So the first thing is we must establish ourselves in that presence and then extract and retrieve our sovereignty. So it had a lot to do with just placing myself. And we did a lot of uh, placements by way of our breathing, a way of the acknowledgement of the external conditions and my engagement with the external conditions. And one of the first lessons that my kupuna shared with me is the very definition of aloha. You know, in the Hawaiian language, we have a really sophisticated language in that we can ka'avale our words. Ka'avale means to like dissect so that we can find the kauna or the deep meaning within that word, which means all of our words are coded. They're coded. And so when we do the ka'avale of aloha itself, which is perhaps the most popular Hawaiian word, but also to the people, it's the most cherished Hawaiian word. When we do the ka'avale with aloha, it literally means face to face, mm. face to face. And my kupuna would say, okay, to position ourselves in that presence of aloha, we are face to face with three aspects. The first is we are face-to-face -face with the natural world, with nahele, face-to-face -face with the natural world. The second is that we are face-to-face -face with our brothers and our sisters, with our kanaka, with our people. And the third is we are face-to-face -face with ourselves. Okay, I, I just had to jot that down real quick because that really... I mean, that's part of the guide, isn't it? Like, that's the guidebook right there. <laughs> How do you find truth? Well, you imagine yourself or you put yourself raw, open, and 
honestly face to face with nature. There's, you can't really lie to nature because there's no room, right? Mm -hmm. And then maybe you get the chance to be able to share that with another human, another being, another person. Um, and then yourself, or does it start with yourself? Let's go there. <laughs> Let's go with that. And I love, Tish, I love that you're going into the actual Ka'avale of all these definitions, <laughs> right? So we're even going further into that. And I would say, you know, that first aspect of aloha, which means I'm face to face with the natural world. I feel like for me in my own life, that is a recognition of what are the materials that are accessible to me. This, this phenomenal world and all its contrasts and all its differences is a world of materials. And so I'm in recognition of the materials that I have access to, the resources, right? How can I be creative? How, how, how can, I, can I interplay with this incredible, incredible reality? And then we have that second part of aloha, which is I'm face to face with my brothers and my sisters. And of course, this is how we interact. How are we interacting? And I feel like very, you know, it's, it's one of the most compelling things about being human is that we are a species that must interact. We must interact. Our journey is that made up of referencing and references. That's why the third dimension is about contrast, about differences. We can only understand contrast and differences when we interact with it. Mm -hmm. And thus, that second part is a, a lot to do with interaction. And then that third aspect of aloha, that face-to-face -face with the self, it's like, okay, now how do I bring forward? When I'm bear witness and I'm interacting with all of these resources, how am I going to bring forth myself as a resource? Myself as a resource. And thus we say in the culture, you know, each and every one of us, we have a kiakahi or a purpose. We have a purpose. And it's of course, aligned too with the Hawaiian culture, the ha'a ha'a or the humility. So in that humility, we are just bearing witness. We are placing ourselves. We are recognizing that to which is around us. And then once that is established, then how am I going to extract, retrieve my own kiakahi and then offer that as a contribution? It is within that offering of our sovereign kiakahi or purpose as a contribution, do we hala? And hala means to ascend. And all the other words that we have we have chosen to select or to honor that represents that. But it's truly in our contribution of our kiakahi, do we now have the passage of the hala? Right. Yeah. So, and I like what you said about... Um, sharing with our brothers and sisters because one thing that i love is that we are only made human by other humans right you can't really be made human by our angels or by our ancestors or even by nature it has to be with another human so that interaction piece is super key to us being able to contribute our kiakahi even. And so many of us walk through so much of our lives, not even doing that without lying and to ourselves, really. I know that I'm guilty. I pretty much, I would have to say not intentionally, but I probably do lie every day, even if it's just my speaking to myself, right? So yeah, how, that's, that's heavy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, that, that, that to which you're speaking into about that, it's like, yes, you know, and, and then we can, we can go and hold counsel, perhaps negotiate with the reasons to why we are deceptive. And I'm like you, Tish, as well. You know, I find myself in, in little lies throughout the day when I say yes, when I really mean no, uh, you, you know, just th these simple unconscious things. Uh, because right. Or when you say I'm okay, when you really aren't, or when you, yeah, exactly. Or when you want to pause, but you keep going forward or the other way around. <laughs> yeah. 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 And that's like, so, I mean, truth really, what, you know, I, I feel like we should talk about how, where do you feel truth? Like, where does it come up in your body? 
I know where I seem to feel truth because like emotions, we can move through the emotions, right? And those are going to move. Those are energy in motion and they're going to keep moving and changing, but your truth is solid and your truth resides somewhere else in your body. And where is that for you? <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, you know, uh, I'll speak on behalf of myself, but also of the of the culture of the mute culture, because we do have a place in the body that that is the storehouse and and is the access point to truth, and that's the nao, it's the nao, and the nao is that sacral area, it's that gut area, and even in biology, you know, the 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 gut is the enteric brain, the enteric brain, and that's really the storehouse of of all those activation points, those emotional activations and emotional, uh, our emotional experience here is our electrical experience. That's how we're electric. And it comes by way of those emotional impulses. And those emotional impulses take instructions from truth, from that truth. So that enteric brain, the na'o, that's in the culture too. That's what we consider the feminine. That's the feminine ho'ai or domain, the unihipili. And it's in that unihipili do we extract that which is most honest. That's why, you know, we call the unihipili the, the, the oracle. It's, it's that to which we re, uh, retrieves and extracts from amnesia, that to which is most honest. The problem today is that many people reject that. That's why I also believe that in patriarchy, there's such a deep rejection of, of the feminine. It's because we're rejecting the truth because it's not aligned or compatible to the established narrative, which is imitation and control culture. And, you know, I, I share it like this, because this is most certainly true in my life and what I have observed. But in patriarchy, okay, in the rejection of our internal feminine, that enteric brain, uh, it seems like there are four. There are four approved personalities. This is what patriarchy is telling us. And so all of us are competing to be the best at one of those four personalities and it's caused a lot of mess it's definitely caused a lot of separation a lot of hostility and bitterness and resentment and all the things however i know that there are seven billion human beings which would suggest that there are seven billion approved personalities yes but seven billion approved personalities needs a leader and a hero in order to exalt and express that. And thus, we're also contributing our kiyakahi, our purpose. And so no longer going into the imitation game, but extracting that which is most honest and most true about me, which sometimes can be uncomfortable because, wow, it's not compatible to this established narrative. And so I go back into the imitation. No, I remain loyal and disciplined to that which is most honest about me. It needs a voice. It needs a body. It needs a carrier. It needs... It needs an out, and that's me, that's you. And we're all just ambassadors of our truth, our oya, our truth, and that is our contribution. Mm, right. So um, you brought up something, and I really, uh, I want to talk about this before we move on, and I'm going to mention again later, is that you speak about the unhepili and the uhane and the kiyakahi and uh, the amakua. And this is all a part of a course of yours, a congress, really, that is a training that helps people find their safety within, helps people find their own truth and how to trust their na'a, how to trust their gut feelings that emotional center and then how to bring that out into you know their community into nature and showing who they really are as trustworthy contributions <laughs> to this existence and really representing their souls and the essence of who they are and that's aloha ma the aloha ma congress and this was an integral part of my growth and development. And it was like, I'd been training and training and working and working for so many years. And this happened and it was like, everything just was like when those gears all go and then they're all and they all just hum. 
And that is what this did for me. And I know there's so many people out there who could also have that experience in their own way. And um, I just want to make sure that everybody out there knows if you ever want to explore this deeper with Keoni, I completely and totally uh, I just, this is, it's amazing. I recommend it and I, I would suggest it <laughs> on every level for every single person that I know. So, um, that's just a huge thank you to you, Keoni, for being that part in this process for me, because I feel like I caught up to myself and I'm so grateful. I did the work, but you guided a good part of the way. Mahalo, mahalo, mahalo. Wow, mahalo, thank you, Tish, and and what a joy and what a privilege to witness you, and also for you to teach me how to love you, which is that process. And this is what my kupuna would say. They would say, "Don't assume we know how to love you. You're going to have to teach us." And and you know when we position ourselves in that truth, and we enforce that truth, that is us simultaneously teaching people how to truly love and honor us. Now there's mutual respect. And mutual respect is the antidote to war and war culture, because in my own life, that to whom I respect and that to which I respect, there is no way I can harm it. And of course, this applies to the self. And you're speaking into aloha ma, and aloha ma means self-reflective love. And we're doing that circumnavigation of this phenomenal experience as human beings, and we're coming back to that place of love and the love of the self, which is the love of our entire experience and the pardoning of all shame, of all sense of inadequacy. In the unihipili, that's that internal feminine, we determine and we affirm our safety. So we are established so that the truth has a carrier. It has a place. And then we go to the uhane, the internal masculine, which so beautifully, as you shared, it's how we express that. It's how we engineer that. It's how we build the structures, you know, and, and as these conduits for that energy, we can finally translate what my truth looks like, sounds like, tastes like feels like I can become this artist and this engineer and this architect. And that's the internal masculine, the uhane. And then when those are in right relation, the unihipili, the internal feminine and the uhane, the internal masculine, then we are in our holistic self or the androgen, which we call the aumakua, the aumakua. And it is truly the aumakua who is going to be the one who identifies and assures that that kia kahi, has been made and is continue and will continue to be made a contribution. So I do teach a Congress, a La Hui. Um, and that's actually coming up. We have registration open now on my website. If you go to pohala.net, um, I would definitely love for you to join that La Hui, that Congress, and learn more about how you can integrate your feminine, masculine, and your holistic self. And the cool thing about that is that you would love it. I would love it. The entire planet would love it. The universe would love it. Like if everybody could really identify what their truth is on the inside and know, and then when you're not feeling your truth, right? Then what do you do? You adjust, right? You adjust. It's like, don't spend so much time like beating yourself up or in the shame or all of those regret and, and everything. Just allow yourself to move forward, identify and move forward in a new way of being in your truthful self, right? Oh, that's so beautifully said, Tish, because, you know, that's part of evolution is, is our ability to adjust. And that's one of the beautiful things I, I recall Darwin said, and one of the things I do agree with Darwin about, and Darwin said that the survival of a species is not reliant on its intelligence, nor its physical strength. It's reliant on its ability to adjust. Mm. Adapt. Perfect. I like that. Hey, I have a question because you do a lot of um, burn work. So that is your other medium of healing in mastery and this uh, walk of this life of yours. Is there a fern that identifies and translates truth or trust? But Absolutely. it's not really an emotion. So I don't know. Is there? Absolutely. Yes. yes. I work with with Pua Ehu Ehu fern medicine. It's an archaic fern medicine that has been handed down in my lineage for the last 20,000 years. 
And um, ferns correlate to human emotions. Individual ferns hold the codes to certain human emotions. There is a fern called Pa Iva Iva. It's more commonly known as the maidenhair fern. And this is the fern of truth. And it guides us and it reminds us, laden in its spores, the medicine of that fern itself holds the codes to truth. And so just uh, participating and 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 playing with this fern, uh, you can really begin to receive that download of what truth really means to the individual self. Mm. And you, um, you do tinctures and you do, um, and sprays and oils. Is there one of those that we can get on your website? I don't even, I don't think I have truth. Yes, yes. I, I, um, offer Pa Eva Eva Fern as an edible hydrosol. And so, yes, I, I do. Uh, I also, my company is also an apothecary business, and this is also aligned with my grandmother. My grandmother taught me the trade as well of how to extract medicine from La'a Lapa'auf, uh, plant medicine. And so it's something that I have carried on, the legacy of my ohana. Uh, and yes, there it is. Ohala Yes, oh. look at, oh, they're beautiful. And everyone that I share, I can't tell you how many times I've given your website out for people to be able to purchase these to use on their own because I use them in ceremony I use them in the sacred healing work that I do and they're just you can feel you can feel the plant you can feel the essence you can feel the relationship building you know between the ferns and the human and that's a beautiful beautiful gift thank you so much <laughs> Hello, thank you, and and you know, so honored, honored to to uh, continue this tradition of la la pa plant medicine with the ferns, and uh, definitely encourage uh, everyone to go on my website and read more about it. You know, it's something that's not very known. Fern medicine is not very known, and it's one of my dreams to proliferate it so that it's a more accessible uh, for for people all over the world. Yeah, it's funny because I came to your workshop, a whole weekend workshop. And people are like, oh, I didn't even know. And this is, you know, this confession time that it was about emotions. I just was like, Fern's great. I'm in, I'm there, big island. This guy's supposed to be amazing. I show up and I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> and it's just like, you know, busted everything wide open. I'm like, oh, emotions. I got a lot of work to do. I am an emotional being. So yeah, yes. it's pretty, <laughs> <laughs> pretty, pretty, uh, incredible, incredible work. And I can't wait to do another uh, retreat with you and learn more. And thank you so much for coming on. I think we're at time and I certainly hope that I'll be able to have you on again to be able to bring all of this wisdom and training that you have to not only Hawaii, but to the rest of the world, because what we need now is a little more um, truth and aloha and how that relates with each other. And I think people can uh, identify with aloha. They don't, they don't know it, but it feels friendly, you know? Yeah. So. Thank you so much for all the work that you're doing. Thank you for taking the time to come today. And um, yeah, I'm just in deep gratitude. Keoni, mahalo. Mahalo, mahalo piha. And thank you so much for inviting me on this space. Thank you to all the viewers. Uh, and Tish, it's it's just so lovely uh, all, to to always have these, these conversations with you. I'm so grateful. Uh, and I love you completely, my sister. Aloha. And I love you too completely <laughs> and to um all of our think tech sponsors and donors thank you so much and to think tech thank you for giving us a platform to be able to have these most amazing conversations and to be able to bring up all of these topics so that people can better themselves and better um contribute to this world with their life essence aloha Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please click the like and subscribe button on YouTube.
You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Check out our website, thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.